Good evening at 6 p.m. The best variety of gospel of knowledge is power broadcast with Dr. Marseille Wells Strozier. Information on how to reach Chia will follow today's broadcast. And now, here's your host. Hello, listeners, and welcome For back to another exciting week of Chia Use of Knowledge is Power. I'd like to say hello to my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful engineer, Al. How are you this week? Oh, I am fantastic. Thank I you, Jesus. I am so happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank um, you. Tonight's show's topic is going to be about the pros and cons of entrepreneurship. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do for as a profession and what businesses I do own and what I'm a founder of. In addition to that, uh, I also have a special guest in the studio with me, Mr. Paul Herring. Um, Paul, how are you? I am wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just see the face that went along with that, hi, I'm wonderful. <laughs> Callers, if you're interested in participating in this phone, in this um, session on tonight, please give us a call at 810-239-5733. Again, the number is 810-239-5733. One other thing, listeners, um, for those who do call in to ask questions or share their their ideas. Please be cautious or please remember this is a 30 minute show and we had some wonderful callers that gave us a call um, last week but it was after the show but we still took the calls but we would like for you to be active on the radio show in order to share your ideas so please the time that we have is from f 6 until really like 628 <laughs> before the show ends. So let's get into this. We're talking about the pros and cons of entrepreneurship and Paul I know know you own a couple of businesses. So what type of businesses do you own? Currently, uh, I'm focusing on the production company and the production studio. Okay. But I've had uh, mini bike repair companies. Mm -hmm. I've sold Christmas cards. I have had a radio control balloon advertising business. Mm -hmm. I've done a bunch of things. Okay. As for myself, um, I used to, like I stated last week, I used to work in interior design. Right. And then one thing about interior design, you have to be there after every holiday because there's always a big sale. And in addition to that, you have to work weekends because that's when most people go shopping. So when I left doing interior designing, I went into business for myself and I opened up a silk floral designing shop that was called Homer Allen Silk Floral Designs. Okay. And I used to be located on Fenton and Hemfield Road. Okay. Um, this was many years ago. And when I did that business, that was a LLC a limited liability company. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of things from that um, business, and I ended up crossing over going into education. Okay. And since being in education, I now have two different types of businesses. One, I have Yes Rem Global Industries, okay. which is an LLC, and I also am the founder of the Center for Higher Educational Achievement. Mm -hmm. So those are the two organizations I'm going to talk about, and the first one I'm going to talk about is Yes Rem Global Industries. Yes Rem Global Industry is an LLC, a limited liability company. And one thing about limited liability, if you were to be sued for something, not necessarily will you be sued personally, but your company will be sued. I know a lot of people always try to sue the owner and the business, but under a limited liability, you sue the company and not the owner because the owner is not necessarily held responsible is the company that's responsible. As for the 501, the Center for Higher Educational Achievement, mm -hmm. the Center for Higher Educational Achievement is a not-for-profit organization. And what people don't understand is a not-for-profit organization, you are not a business owner. You're only a founder of the organization. I do remember I spoke with somebody at the Genesee County Chamber and um, we were talking about women-owned businesses. And I come to find out then, once you have completed the paperwork for a not-for-profit organization, you no longer own that piece of paper. It belongs to your board of directors. You become now a founder. And your board of directors now are your superiors. You report to your board, even though it is your vision. Um, that was one of the things that kind of helped me back from doing a charter school. Um, because you can do all the hard work for, to complete the application for a charter school, but once you get that charter, it is no longer yours. 
it belongs to a board of directors. So for people who are interested in starting a business, please make sure you understand what type of business you're operating. Are you going to operate an LLC? Um, are you going to operate or oh, be a founder of a not-for-profit organization such as a 501c3? But they also have another one that's ca called a 50, I think it's called a 501, I know I'm going to say it wrong, but there is another one that they have out now where you can be like a limited liability and still have a mission like a 501c3. The state of Michigan implemented that uh, several years ago. The only downfall about that is if you're trying to apply for grants, most grants require you to be a 501c3. So, Al, when it comes to, not Al, I'm sorry, Al, when it, Paul, when it comes to your type of businesses that you've operated, what kind of organization were they as far as when you registered those businesses with the state of Michigan? Well, they all started out as just DBAs. Okay. And define DBA. Uh, do, uh, DBA is doing business as. Mm -hmm. And where did you, where, where do you um, sign that paperwork? Uh, I think that's the county clerk's yeah, office. Yeah, this is the county uh, clerk's third floor office. On the county clerk's office. And there is... There is the responsibility as a DBA, Paul Herring is Spectacle Productions, and okay. Spectacle Productions is Paul Herring. Mm -hmm. So if I were to have uh, a lawsuit, they would sue me as well. Yes. Until it's formed into an LLC yes. and it becomes its own entity, mm -hmm. its own being, um, I'm responsible for Spectacle Productions. I have spoken with several people, and they don't know about getting that DBA. The DBA is nothing but $10, and that's registering your business with the county. Mm -hmm. um, because other than that, you really don't have the foundation of a business. You're just operating a hobby. You have to register your business with the county. Now, you can go down to the county and pay your $10, or you can just go online and print out the paperwork. Even with the DBA, you can be considered a hobby. That is true, if you're not making any money. <laughs> if you're not making any money. I've had, I've had the IRS laugh at me. I've had uh, yes. uh, Black Enterprise Magazine mm -hmm. laugh at me. I thought I was doing it. You know? uh, that's a big difference, and I was taught that too. There's a big difference. Um, Paul, what do you find is the benefits of owning a business? Uh, freedom. Better believe it. You know, the freedom, and, and, and there's a lot of struggles with it. There, mm -hmm. There's more struggles than benefits, but mm -hmm. the benefits are just beautiful. Yeah. You know, I spent all my kids' childhood mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. You know, if they had something at school, I was there. If they mm -hmm. needed to go somewhere, I was there. Mm -hmm. So the flexibility... And sometimes there's not flexibility. You know, That's sometimes true. there's a birthday party you can't make that is true. because you got to deal with this client. Mm -hmm. So you, you you have to make tough decisions all the way around. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, like in my case, I'm everything. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. the marketing director. I'm mm -hmm. the personnel director. I'm the janitor. I'm the maintenance man. I'm you know, mm -hmm. the designer. I'm everything. Mm -hmm. So if 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 your pants are big enough. Mm -hmm. and your skill set is wide enough or you're just willing to learn mm -hmm. things you don't know, it's fabulous. What I find to be uh, a benefit to owning a business is it allows you to be creative. Um, I do find, well, I have found that sometimes when you're employed by certain individuals, they can be intimidated with your thoughts uh, or with your ideas, shall I say, not with your thoughts, um, or they take your ideas and capitalize on it or claim that they came up with the idea or they would try to suppress you from being creative and i find that when you own your own business you can shine so much because you can now implement those visions that was given to you but you can stink too well yeah, what i do mean you, mean you by can that? i mean you can have some bad ideas and you can throw money behind bad ideas and lose money as an entrepreneur without having anybody help you filter those things out. You know what I mean? When well, you, you got a boss or somebody to talk to, they'd say, no, orange jumpsuits aren't going to sell this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you got somebody to talk to and they say, oh, I don't know, those orange might go. That orange <laughs> is black, you know. It's, you know, so you got to take not only responsibility for your successes, uh -huh. but you got to take responsibility for your failures. That's true. And that's something that you, I've learned a lot is when you listen to a lot of motivational speakers, when you listen to a lot of people who have, you know, success is what you make it. Um, is what you measure, but those who have attained, 
their status of a success. They always say, when you fail, fail big. And the thing about failing, failing is your learning lessons. And it's not always, it's not supposed to be bad at all. Most people think when you fail, oh, it's horrible. It's, it all depends on how you look at it. You're supposed to look at a failure as a learning experience. Like when I had the, uh, the silk floral shop. One thing I learned about that is that you had to be there. You know, I know some people operate businesses that they're only going to be there at this certain time. Were you losing clientele at that time and you're losing money at that time because you're not there? And that's something I learned is that you have to be present in order for your customers to, to be able to come and do business with you. I agree. Two rules that I, I, I kind of live by. One is the serenity prayer. Mm. And the other was... Um, was it Thomas Edison? He said he learned a thousand ways mm -hmm. not to make a light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Most people don't understand that it wasn't Thomas Edison who really created the light bulb. Yes, we know. I know about Philo. It's the filament <laughs> that makes the light bulb. So a lot of people don't understand that. Another thing that I uh, find is a, a benefit to owning a business is the financial opportunity. Um... I actually got into an argument with a guy at Comcast <laughs> um, <no. laughs> recently, and um, I, I mean, I was really livid with him, and when he got done with me, I said, you know what? I said, you should be self-employed. He said, why? I said, for as much yelling and screaming I did with you, and you kept your calm and cool, I said, you really did a good job with me. He said, ma'am, he said, I'm also a consumer. So once you explained your situation to me, I understood what you were talking about. I said, but just guess what? If you could take all that energy and that patience and invest it into yourself, I said, you could just own your own business. He said, you know, I never thought of it that way. I said, yes, because by the time I hang up the phone with you, your company can just say we're downsizing. Because he fought, he fought for Comcast. He fought for them. But then I had my stuff in writing, so it was done and over with. No fight. I'm going to let you talk. Yeah. But he was, you know, everybody's not cut out for entrepreneurship. That is true. But um, the financial, to me, to me, you only know your self-worth. And there's a lot of times where I've been employed in certain positions, whereas I should have gotten paid more, but I didn't. For whatever reasons, they chose to give me. It could never be that I didn't know what I was doing. It was never that I wasn't professional. It was never that I wasn't educated enough. People have their reasons for not giving you a raise. But when you are self-employed, you know, like, I need to sell this amount in order for me to make this amount. I need to do this in order to get that. So I think the financial opportunity is so much greater when you're self-employed opposed to working for an individual. It is, as well as this financial responsibility. I'm still, so. I'm still paying off some credit cards yeah. from yeah. some of my lessons. Yeah, that you know is true. I mean? That is true. And that takes us to the challenges of being self-employed. And that's like the first thing I have on my list. It is a financial burden. Um, you do have to put up your own capital before you start a business. Um, even if someone invests in you, you still have to return that investment. But most people I know that starts a business, they use their own money in order to start a business. And if you don't have, if you still work in a day job, that's good, but eventually you're going to have to leave that day job in order for your business to grow. I disagree. Hmm, okay. I think you can do both. There's 24 hours in a day. And if you dedicate eight to them and four to you, you still got plenty of time. But it depends on what type of business. This is true. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it's a managing or consulting or, or, mm -hmm. or a walk-in business like mm -hmm. your floral shop, yeah. you got to have employees anyway. Yeah. So you need so that four hours now becomes you doing your paperwork and your mm -hmm. taxes and your ordering and things mm -hmm. like that where you leave your staff mm -hmm. to do the day to day. Well, you know what that goes into something else though, but that you can now with the internet to be able to have a day job and be able to have a business. That is true. But when we're looking at more of a what I do now for what I do. 
because I'm going to talk about what's the difference in being self-employed and being a business owner. Those are two different things. Most people are functioning as self-employed and not business owners. And normally when you're starting having staff and you're not the main one there, then you're a business owner. But majority of us function as self-employed. That means we have to be there. But the Internet has allowed us to be more flexible in that we can have a day job and we can be on the Internet uh, selling things because I do know a gentleman he sells toys mm -hmm. over the internet nice. but he holds a day job um, I know um, an individual that holds a day job and then she's also doing food delivery for the grocery stores you in know, the evenings yeah. so there are certain things that you can do I want to buy storage units and sell them Storage units? Yeah. Oh, Flip storage units. You know, people don't pay the rent on their storage unit, uh -huh. and the storage company sells it. Mm -hmm. Auctions bids on it. Oh, you know that's called whatever. Storage Wars. Yeah. I like that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you can really you can really do that. Yeah. So yeah, that, there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, but another thing that I find to be a challenge in um, being self-employed is a lack of support. Um, sometimes when you're the first one to start a business around your family or your friends, they don't understand because know. they want you to do what is the norm. You get a job, you pay your bills. But what you find out or what I found out is most of those people are unhappy. They're trying to find another job, get out of that job, or they hate going to that job. I love what I do. I wake up every morning excited about going to work. And I can stay there all day. You know, they say your calling or your purpose is what What could you do that you could do all day long and never be paid you for You don't it? know how many times I've looked up and found that it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. It's a heartbeat. You know, and you look up, whoa, where'd the time go? Yeah. You but know? that also goes back to sometimes you can't make it to certain events. Because you have a lot of responsibilities, you have a lot of things to do. And then people who don't own businesses or who haven't done something like this, they don't understand. They don't understand that there's no such thing as a nine to five with you. They don't understand that you may, you can't make it to this event or you can't afford something because your money is already allotted or should I say earmarked for something for the business. So support is one of the things that I find, a lack of support is what I find to be kind of difficult. When oh, yeah. you're yeah. your I mean, uh, when I do video, people think that I get to go to all these events for free and you get to, you know, go to this mm -hmm. concert and that concert because you're mm -hmm. filming it. But it's a whole different head for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to enjoy and bounce around. I'm dealing with what I have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's not the same experience. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, uh, whoever I take with me mm -hmm. can enjoy it, you yeah. know, but I got to do what I got to do. And you can't get mad at me for doing what I got to do. That's true. Enjoy the show. That's true. That's true. That's true. I'm going to take a quick break from here. Um, listeners, uh, the Chia Adult Skills Center is accepting enrollments for students age 25 and older at Chia Adult Skills Center who lives in the zip codes of 48504, 48505, and 48506. Seating is limited for this program. The program is designed to help adults with basic reading, basic math, GED prep, ESL, English as a Second Language, to help you learn the English language and to help you develop your overall skills for a better life and better job opportunity. In addition, if you don't have your high school diploma or your GED, we still work with adults who have graduated from high school. Nice. However, you may need some help in your reading, you may need some help in your math, or you may be on your way to college and you didn't test high enough for uh, the BNO 100 level class. So we're able to assist you as well, as long as you live in a zip code 484, 48504, 48505, and 48506. You call that pre-college admission tutoring or something? Yes. Beautiful. Yes. That's fabulous. Because we have a lot of students who not necessarily are they college ready, and those are the ones who normally test in your lower level, zero level classes. I've so been out of school for 20 help. years. I need I need a little tutoring on just being in you school. I've been out 20 years. I've been out longer than that. You're lying. You're older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he tried to be a comedian tonight. Yeah. So callers, uh, listeners, I'm sorry. If you are 
wondering or if you're in question about our Adult Learning Center, please give us a call at 810-553-2140. Again, the number is 810-553-2140. All right, Paul, let's look at... Um, I want to talk about defining self-employed and a business owner. Um, one thing is I do a lot of reading because I don't have a mentor. I don't know a lot of people who are serious about owning their business. I know, I know a lot of hustlers. I know a lot of people who have a hobby, you know. But there is two distinct differences. And one of the main individuals I watch and I listen to because he has a podcast is Robert Kiyosaki. And Robert Kiyosaki wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's not, uh, it's a really good book. Mm -hmm. And the title is misleading the because the poor dad was the educated dad and the rich dad was the uneducated dad. But it's the knowledge that he knew the poor dad, right. the knowledge that he knew made him a millionaire. Right. And so he defines, he gives us two definitions as self-employed and a business owner. A self-employed is a person who has to be there in order for the business to make money. So we look at attorneys, we look at doctors, and we look at teachers, okay? In order for the business to be successful, you have to be there. But he said your goal should be is to become business owner, a business owner. So a business owner is the one who hires the individuals to be there, that you're not so much there for the business to function, but you can oversee your organization. So with Yas Ram Global Industries, which is my uh, book publishing company, um, I'm still self-employed there because I still do everything. I employ people in order to do parts I don't understand and don't know, but I'm still self-employed because I don't have key people in positions in order to do certain things for that business. Mm -hmm. And actually, I really don't need anyone in there because um, it's a publishing company. I've written my own books. One of the books I'm telling uh, listeners to please look up is Kiera and Me, Homonyms and Homophones. Mm -hmm which is a language arts book. Oh, that's right, that, the children's yes, book. My Th children's book. Those are beautiful. Book. However, I don't use just for children. I use it for adults. As a matter of fact, on next Monday, one of my students will be reading that book nice. for, his less, for his class lesson okay. on homonyms and homophones. And this book is for children or people of color where it actually put people of color as the educators and not the ones being educated. Mm -hmm. And it's a language arts book. And so I wrote this book and I put it up under my own publishing company. Okay. And the reason why I put it up under my own publishing company is because I looked at other publishers and guess what people don't understand? They own your material. Right. Whoever registered right. your ISBN, right. they own your stuff. So you put all that work. I felt like Jay-Z one day or something happened. <laughs> this is America. Yeah. And most people don't know this. If you don't own your, whoever registers your book, that ISBN, they own your material. So I published everything myself. So I own everything. The copyrights, the, uh, the drawings and everything. I made sure it was in writing once I purchased it from my illustrator that it, everything belongs to me. And so by me putting it up under Yas Realm, which is nothing but Marseille spelled backwards, mm -hmm. Yas Realm Global Industry. Um, another thing about the name, not only is it just my first name, but it also is a vision. Marseille's global industry is basically what it's saying. My thing is to impact people around the world, not just right here at home. Home is the beginning part. You know, they always say charity starts at home. However, my thing is for it to be a global uh, phenomenon. So I'm very thankful to uh, Daily Elementary because the book is in Daily Elementary. I'm also thankful for uh, Northridge Academy because the book is in Northridge Academy. I'm also grateful for the Community Foundation that funded the program to be, we did an after school program with the book at Daily Elementary. So the book is being well received. Uh, we're also working on the book getting into some of the Flint schools as well. Um, as a supplemental educational tool. So um, 
My other, the, uh, the, me being a founder up under the Center for Higher Educational Achievement, well, I'm just a founder. But I'm still employed by it because I have an agreement with the board of directors. So that's totally different. I'm not self-employed there. I'm an employee of something that I founded. So the only thing I'm really, I'm an employee, I guess, huh? Well, you know, you can set up those bylaws to do whatever. I know a woman that made herself the president for life of her 501c3 and her paperwork. You can do that. Uh, you can, whatever your contract is with your board of directors, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But I want listeners to understand, when you have completed the 501c3 for a not-for-profit, you are not a business owner. If you are a woman who have done this, you are not a woman-owned business. You are only a founder of a not-for-profit, and you have to have a board of directors that oversees you. You can be an employee. Well, you can the, have a female board. Oh, yeah, you can have a female board. If your board is female, wouldn't you qualify no. as a... Mm -mm. It's not a woman-owned business. It's an organized 501c3. It's a charitable organization. organization. Yeah. yeah, it's a charitable organization. All righty. Um, what advice would you give to someone who will be wanting to open a business? Uh, make sure it's something you love doing because you'll be doing it all the time, you know. Uh, I'm open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think of things when I'm cooking eggs at the stove, when I'm walking the dog. I'm always on. Mm -hmm. You're always on. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like what you're doing, always on will be a burden. Yeah. If you like what you're doing, you won't even know you're on. That is true. That is true. For myself, the first thing I would like for a person who's interested in operating a business is to read the book by Magic Johnson, 32 Ways to, to Become a Success in Business. Okay. And one thing he says is that everyone is always talking about jobs, jobs, jobs. Where are the jobs? He said, but if you just stop and look around in your community and see a need in your community, Opposed to complaining about where are the jobs become a job developer by solving a problem in your community. So that's what I did when I started this uh, Center for Higher Educational Achievement, even though it is a not-for-profit organization. But the not-for-profit organization, which has Chi Adult Skills Center, is fulfilling a need to educate adults over the age of 25 who would normally be in an educational institution with 17, 18, and 19-year-olds who also didn't complete school. Right. Um, me owning Yas Realm Global Industries, I saw a need in order to have a product for people of children of color to be able to identify with something that looks it. like them. I liked it. Um, but they're not the ones being educated. They are the ones that's educating the, the person that's reading the book. Another thing I would encourage you to do is if you don't have a mentor, your books can be your mentor. Robert Kiyosaki is my mentor. Um, at Ralph Smart, uh, he's on the internet. I love him. He's a motivational speaker. Um, Dick Gregory, honestly, he may not own businesses and he's passed away, bless his soul, but he, he mentors me and motivates me in a totally different way. There's a lot of different motivational speakers. Denzel Washington Les delivered Brown. an excellent yeah. graduation uh, speech several years ago, mm -hmm. and they're just awesome. Um, I like to also say surround yourself around other business owners if you can find one. If you can join the chamber, the chamber normally has meetings. Um, uh, other entrepreneurs in the area. Actually, we have the Flint, Genesee. Uh, chamber, account, uh, chamber of Commerce, and also Grand Blank has one. Um, it's just a matter of joining those. And the most important thing is don't give up. Um, there's a time and season for your business is going to be, you may not be producing, but that's your time to work. That's your time to work hard. Then it's going to be times where it's going to be booming, and then guess what? There's going to be a slope again. So it's not always going to be on the up. You're going to have slopes. And I just recommend you not to give up. So Don't count on one product. 
You got to diversify. You got to diversify. So when this one's down, the other one's up. And you don't necessarily give up on things, Mm -hmm. but you have to realize sometimes you have to shelf something. That's true. You got to put it on the shelf. I don't have enough finances. I got to bank up to do this portion of it. I'm going to shelf this for two years or six months or whatever. You can't be afraid of doing that stuff. That's true. Al, you ever thought about owning a business? I did own a business. Oh, what did you own? It was an arcade. No, no, it was um, drag cleaners. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, did you? What yeah. was the name of your drag cleaners? Fat Alberts. Really? Yeah. Where was it located? South, downtown on uh, 2nd Street in the Capitol Theater. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You know, they're having that. all those new businesses that's right. opening up in the Capitol right. Theater. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And the place where I'm at, uh-huh. there's no one in it. Oh. No one there. No one there. Not right now. Really? I, I looked at it. And also, I was on Moore and Saginaw Street, too, right. across the street from the A&W. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's when I met Al back in the day when right. he was doing that. I think right. that's when I first met him. Yeah, you. that's when you first met me. Paul. I sure did. How yeah. long did you run your business? Um, from um, 82 to, I um, think it was 88, because I left, yeah, it was 88, because I left Flint and went to um, Florida. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, you never know who's who had a business unless you yeah. ask them. Right? Oh, those are the beautiful years. Yeah, those are beautiful years. Well, listeners, yeah. I want to tell you thank you so much for joining us on next week. We actually have one of our GD graduates from Chi Adult Skills Center. She'll be with us on next week. Uh, Miss Serena Triplett talking about uh, returning to school as an adult learner. So, listeners, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to hear, well, not hope, I know you'll tune in on next week. Right. Have a good week. There you go.